Okay, guys, let's compare the value of the our base here. We have a exponential function that is growing. Our base is two. And then we have a base that is one half and you see it's decreasing. So this is what lets us know if our exponential function is a growth or a decay. If it is increasing, our base will be greater than one. So when your B value is greater than one, you know that this is a growth. If our base is between zero and one, again, between zero and one, it is a decay. So make sure you write this in your notes. The B value tells us if it is a growth or decay. Growth, meaning it is growing, it is increasing. Decay, meaning that it is decreasing. Decay is decreasing. And your B value, the value that has your X, tells you if it's a growth or decay. So pause the video and make sure you have this in your notes. Okay, let's take a look at some examples without graphing. Let's see if we have a growth or a decay. So number one, let's write this in your notes. The A value is three. My B value is four over five. The B value is B between zero and one, or is it more than one? Well, it's between zero and one, so this is a decay. So my graph would be decreasing. Number two, we have an A value, our initial value. The initial value for AB to the X is the Y intercept. My B value is five over four, so just because it's a fraction doesn't mean it's a decay, because this is really one and one fourth, so this is a growth. Our graph would increase. Number three, our A value is one half. So we would start at zero comma one half. That would be your y-intercept. And my B value, my multiplier is one six. So this, these output values are decreasing. So this is a decay. Number four, we have an A value, an initial value of two over three. And my B value is five, which is more than one. So this function, this exponential function is a grow and it's growing very quickly. We're multiplying each output times five, times five, times five. Okay, so number one, you can clearly see, let's get, um, let's get blue here because they want us to know if this is a growth or decay and explain and then identify the asymptote. So you can see in number one, my graph is decreasing, so this is a decay. Now, let's see, this red graph, our exponential graph, is getting close and close to the line y equals two. This is your asymptote. Number two, our graph is a decay. Our asymptote is getting closer and closer to negative two. So the asymptote would be y equals negative two. Our third example, we see our graph is increasing. This is a growth. And our asymptote is y equals two. Now, we can take a look at Desmos. So you can always use the Desmos calculator to graph your functions to notice the key features. So let's take a look. Let's go back here.
Okay, so if you want to practice that, you can open up Desmos, and that's what I suggest to practice with Desmos Calculator and insert this equation. I have already um, inserted it for us here. So let's get started and identify my A value. In this case, it is one. And my multiplier, my base is two. My domain is all real numbers. My range, however, is restricted. So let's look to see where we are. So here, so here's zero, zero, and it looks like this is our asymptote at the negative eight. So our range is going down to close to negative eight, and then it can go forever to positive infinity. My y-intercept is going to be zero comma negative seven. Notice that my y-intercept in this equation is not my a value because we are not in f of x equals a b to the x, okay? Your a value when in this form is always your y-intercept, but now we have minus eight attached to our equation. So again, for the y-intercept, we're simply going to look at our graph or we could insert zero into our equation and get out the y value. My interval of increase is all real numbers. There are no, there's no interval of decrease. My MB behavior, as X approaches negative infinity, as we go toward the left, as we go toward the left of the graph, F of X, the end of the graph, approaches our asymptote of Y equals negative eight. As we go, as X approaches positive infinity, F of X, the end of this side of the graph, approaches positive infinity. Our asymptote was Y equals negative eight. And now let's find the average rate of change between zero, between X being zero. So that starts here. And then we have three, one, two, three, and it's here. So we're gonna go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to the right, one, two, three. So we have seven over three for our average rate of change. Our next equation, again, this is not in the simple form of AB to the X. So our A value is one, our B value is two. Our domain is all real numbers. Our range is going to depend on the asymptote. So this time our asymptote is y equals three. So our range is three and up. Our y-intercept is right here, zero comma four. Our interval of increase, all real numbers. Our interval of decrease, this graph is never decreasing, it's constantly increasing. This is a growth. Our M behavior, as X approaches negative infinity, F of X approaches the asymptote of three. As X approaches positive infinity, F of X approaches positive infinity. Our asymptote is Y equals three. Some of you may be seeing a pattern. And then let's find the average rate of change. So when X is zero, we have our four value. And then when X is two, crosses here. So one, two, three, one, two. So we have an average rate of change of three over two. Okay, let's take a look at a few more. My A value is one. My multiplier is one half, meaning this is going to be a decay. My domain is all real numbers. My range depends on the asymptote of y equals negative four. Again, some of you are noticing a pattern. So the least value that y can be is right up to the four, negative four, and then it goes forever up. Always put your least number first. My y-intercept is zero 
comma, one, negative one, negative two, negative three. Interval of increase, there is no interval of increase because our graph is a decay. It is going down. The interval of decrease is all real numbers. As X approaches negative infinity, as we go toward negative infinity, the end of this graph, F of X, goes toward positive infinity. As X approaches positive infinity, F of X, the end of this graph, approaches the asymptote of negative four. Our asymptote is Y equals negative four. And let's find the average rate of change. We have negative one, two, three, that looks like right here. So this is negative three comma four, and then zero comma negative three. So we're gonna have our secant line. Whoops, that should be straight. Our secant line is gonna have a negative average rate of change. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over one, two, three. So negative seven over three. Okay, let's try another one of these. We have A is one. My B value, the value with our X variable. So this tells me this is a decay. Even if we didn't have a graph, we knew that if our B value is between zero and one, we have a decay, it's going to decrease. Domain, all real numbers. Our range depends on the asymptote. So this is y equals two. So the least value is not including two, but two and hot to positive infinity. Our ordered pair for our y-intercept is zero, comma, one, two, three. Interval of increase, we have none. This graph is always decreasing, so all x values cause it to decrease. My M behavior, as X approaches negative infinity, F of X approaches positive infinity. As we go left on the graph, we go up. Then as X values increase, the output values approach the asymptote of two. Our asymptote is Y equals two, so average rate of change from negative two right here to zero comma three. Here's our secant line. So we're going down one, two, three, and over one, two. When I say over, I should say to the right. So negative three over two, because we always work from left to right on our graphs. Okay, now that you have seen how you can identify the asymptote, let's identify the A and B again. Make sure we're good with that. And also list the asymptote. So our A value in number one is one. My B value is four over five. So we know that this is a decay. My asymptote is Y equals negative five. Number two, our A value is one. Our B value is five over four. This is a growth. And our asymptote is Y equals three. Number three, our A value is three. Our B value is one over six. This is a decay. And our asymptote is Y equals nine. Number four, our A value is two. Our B value is five. This is a growth. And our asymptote is y equals negative six. Now, when we had the equation in simple form, when a is your y-intercept, notice there's no number added or subtracted, and our asymptote was always y equals zero. So this was really a, b to the x plus zero, but we don't put plus zero. But this is why your asymptote is always y equals zero, when you simply have the form AB to the X. Okay, let's learn how to write an exponential function. And for this course, we are only gonna write it AB to the X. We're not gonna have anything added or subtracted to the X or to the entire equation, which we will learn later. 
So first we need the A value, which is our y-intercept, our initial value. We do not have that. So we can find the B value. So remember your B value is going to be, in this case, we're going to have 32 over 64. Or we could have done 16 over 32 or 8 over 16 and so forth. But we're going to get one half in the end, no matter which ratios we use. So our B value is one half. Now we don't know the A value. So just like we were trying to find a linear function and we didn't know our y-intercept, you're going to choose a point to be your f of x and your x, and that way we can find a. So here's what I mean. Let's just choose, we can just choose this point. So instead of f of x, I'm gonna put eight equals, we don't know the a value, we just found our b value, and my x value for this ordered pair is four. So the ordered pair is four comma eight, and now let's do the math. One half to the fourth is one half times one half times one half times one half. So this is gonna give me one over two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So we have eight equals one over 16 A. And now we're gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal with 16. So let's take your calculator and I'm going to multiply 16 times eight, and this gives us 128. So A, my A value is 128. So I can put that all together. F of X equals the A value of 128 times my multiplier of one half raised to the X. Number two, I don't have the initial value, the zero comma, whatever. If I did, that would be your A value. So again, we're gonna find the B value. So this one is easy to identify. So my B value is two. It's increasing times two, times two, times two. So I'm just gonna use this first ordered pair and I'm gonna plug in two for F of X equals, we don't know the A, my B value we just discovered was two. And then my exponent is one. Because this is your x value, this is your f of x value, and now we're going to get 2 equals 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 times a is 2a. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and my a value is 1. So we're going to put that all together. f of x equals 1 times 2 to the x. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. We can easily see that our multiplier, our B value is three. Three times three is nine, times three is 27 and so forth. So my B value is three. I'm just gonna take this first ordered pair to be my F of X and X, going back to this equation and plugging in everything I have. So F of X is gonna be three. My A value we don't know. Our multiplier is three and our X value is one. We're gonna get Three to the first is three, and three times a is three a. So we have three equals three a. Divide both sides by three, and a is one. Now, they're not always going to be this simple, and you probably could have figured out that your zero, um, zero comma f of x was going to be the one, um, but sometimes they may be more difficult. So again, find your b value. Use one of the ordered pairs to plug in for x and f of x and then do your algebra. So this equation is f of x equals one times my multiplier three raised to the x. I hope this helps.